Well, hello and welcome everybody. Mr. Robinson here with yet another brand new exciting video for you guys. All math based, of course. Um, what we have today though, you know, school year hasn't started, so it's not really any review of any sorts. But uh, this is a video response to something that has hit the web virally, if you will. Uh, there was a math problem, very basic fundamental operations, but of course, with these things, they become viral because there's so much disagreement as, as to which one's the correct answer. And uh, I'm here to settle it once and for all. Uh, just really quick disclosure, people who answered one way correctly might have said, I have taken this many calc classes, and people another way answered incorrectly might say, I have this many math degrees. All right, well, I'm a high school math teacher, a uh, very lowly high school math teacher with um, uh, no math degree. I have a computer science degree and a uh, master's in curriculum and instruction. So boom. But uh, I have the information that I want to provide for you that makes it correct and the reasons that people actually got it incorrect and how to dispel those things and make sense of it. So without further ado, let's go straight into the problem to start with. This is 8 divided by 2 times the quantity 2 plus 2. For those who just want to see how to do it correctly, I'll go ahead and start with that. But in order to explain it, I have to make sure that you understand your order of operations because that's where a lot of people would mess up on this problem. So starting off, I'm just going to go ahead and write out what uh, I learned when I was a young pup. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. It was a nice mnemonic device for the order of operations, the order in which we go about computing in a single evaluative expression um, all of our strings and parses of, of numbers. So starting with parentheses here is the P that is first on the old totem pole, and then exponents is next that you do. Multiplication and division come after that, and addition and subtraction are last. Now the big thing to keep in mind here, of course, is that while uh, parentheses go first, things inside the parentheses, even if they are lower on the pole than things outside of the parentheses, you really want to take care of things inside the parentheses first. The other thing to mention is that multiplication and division are on the same tier as one another, same with addition and subtraction. Multiplication is not above division or the other way around, and that's one reason people have messed up on this problem, but let's go and do it correctly. 8 divided by 2 times the quantity 2 plus 2. Now, this equals uh, parentheses first, yeah? Let's go ahead and do 2 plus 2 inside the parentheses. That becomes 4, and that multiplies with 8 divided by 2. Now, check this out. Because 8 divided by 2 is not interacting with the 2 plus 2, I mean, they kind of do through multiplication, but because they don't on this stage of stuff, I can do 8 divided by 2 right now, write down that 4, and be perfectly okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And 4 times 4 gives you 16. That is the correct answer to the problem. There is no dispute on that, hopefully. You should be very well vested in the idea of that being the correct answer. You can go to a calculator and check it out. In fact, I'm gonna go and do that with you right now. Let's go and go to my graphing calculator here. Let's type in that exact same string of stuff, only instead we get a slash instead of the actual division sign. Uh, I'm not doing it right. Eight divided by two times the quantity two plus two, we get 16. Because calculators only know order of operations, and I think that's really the way that we should really treat it. Or keep in mind, this is more of a traditional calculator. It was made back in the day, and they wouldn't make any other assumptions of you doing anything else kind of crazy with it. And we're about to see some of the crazy stuff with that right now. So let's go back to this one here. Let's leave that equal 16 on the side so you know in good form that that is the answer. Let's look at some wrong stuff, how you don't do this problem. Uh, let's do that in red. If green is good, red is bad. Well, let's start with the 2 plus 2 again. You know, a lot of people argued in favor of it. I know order of operations. 2 plus 2 is something we do first. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and do that part first. That part's correct. Um, now, let's say we still rewrite the 8 divided by 2, which by and large, if this was the first time I was teaching it to you, that's probably what I would do. I wouldn't do the 8 divided by 2 alongside of it to not confuse you with the idea of, wait, division comes after parentheses, but you just did the division. Okay, we'll wait on the division portion. So 8 divided by 2 times 4, nothing wrong with what's written so far. But now we come into some issues here. They're one of three forms, which I've seen online, or not really reasons, but things that I expect and descriptions as to why people get the uh, a different answer. First one, which is not really mentioned as much, but just the idea perceptually, and it's also written in the problem as well. If you see the original problems writing, there's an eight, considerable amount of space, division sign, 
considerable amount of space, two, no real space, parenthesis, two plus two. And we know to do the parentheses first, so even though if there's space between the pluses, we know to do that. But the two and the four, if I, if I rewrite this even closer, even more strangely perceptually off, the two and the four seem to sit a lot closer than the eight, this is very exaggerated, <coughs> like this, but the perception becomes that the two and the four are so joined at the hip that we must have to do those things first. And that might be one of the reasons that when people see this problem, if they rewrite it, just like how the original problem was written, they might have this sense in mind that we gotta do this first. Furthermore, they might even go to the original problem and say, I wanna distribute first the two with these twos. Kinda of strange, because these twos can combine, but they might do that because of all the space in between these division sign things and saying, let's go ahead and do that. That's not how it works. <laughs> That's not how it works. You still do order of operations. Now I'll go back to the perception thing again because I want to talk about variables and constants and how we often make that mistake as well, especially with the calculator and how we have to adjust that. So that's one thing you have to dispel immediately. Perceptually, just because something's written next to it more closely or with less space in between doesn't mean that you automatically compute that first. Uh, the other two things have to do with order of operations. They say, hey, I know my order of operations, parentheses goes first, two plus two is four. And let's do more parentheses, two times four, is eight. Now, I would say back, wait a second, that's not parentheses. And you go, well, yeah, it is. There are parentheses right there. Two times four, see, two parentheses four. Now, they're not wrong that two times four is eight, and they're not wrong that when there are parentheses with no operation in between, that it is multiplication. What they are mistaken about, however, is that this is a case of parentheses taking precedence over multiplication or division, excuse me, in any other sense compared to that of like just writing two times four like this. There is absolutely no discernible difference, especially with order of operations, between what's written here and what's written here. And to treat this one like parentheses and to treat this one just like multiplication that's lower on the totem pole, frankly, would be asinine. So we don't want to have two different sets of what to write there. This isn't parentheses. Parentheses means what's written inside of it, this addition right here. If there was another set of parentheses around the two like this, that's a way different problem, and I'll get into that again later. Um, that, that actually is more like what we're doing here, but it's not because of these parentheses, it would be because of these ones. Way different story. So anyway, there's one reason people would get to this eight. The other reason is because what I said before about the multiplication division thing. Because the way it's written, people might believe that multiplication comes before division. They might believe that multiplication is three, division is four, and likewise, maybe addition, whoops, maybe addition, subtraction, addition is five, subtraction six. Um, nope. Uh, they are on the same rung of the ladder, if you will. In fact, some people now write out, some teachers and stuff write out gems which is, you know, you have to know a little more about what's being said. The G is a little better, I think, than the P here because the G stands for grouping. And grouping doesn't have to just be parentheses. It could be square brackets. It could be absolute value symbols. It could be a square root symbol. Anything that's going to associate things through grouping only would, would apply for all those things, not just parentheses, but parentheses show up the most. So when PEMDAS came into play, that's just how they taught it. Exponents are here. The M was for multiplication and division. Like there's kind of a D right here that's not really written and the S is for subtraction and addition. So that's how gems would be written there. But uh, I'm gonna leave with, I'm gonna stick with the PEMDAS here. As long as you know that multiplication and division are on the same rung. Here's another way of knowing. Division is just multiplication by a fraction. Eight divided by two is the same thing as eight times one half. So if I could take something and rewrite it into multiplication, even though it was division before, is there a reason why it should change and reevaluate the stuff that's going on here as I do it? I hope not. I hope that if this is eight divided by two times four right here, and if I rewrote it as eight times one half times four, remember parentheses notwithstanding, because that's just multiplication, that what, I can now do eight times one half first here, whereas here I could only do two times four first. I would certainly hope not, because these are both equivalent. So when something's equivalent like that, with just a perceptual difference, then um, 
we shouldn't have a different varying answer. Furthermore, we should let the calculator just accept one version of an answer and not multiple. So those are the two different reasons why people would get this answer wrong. And eight divided by eight, of course, becomes one, which is the incorrect answer. Uh, no, sir. So those are the reasons people would get that thing. And to go back to the calculator again, to make sense of how you can make it say, how you can make it say um, one, is you would want, actually before I go here, is you would want it to be kind of like, instead of writing the division left to right, let's write it straight up and down. Eight divided by two times two plus two like that would also, could also be written as eight over two times the quantity two plus two like that. Understanding this is numerator associated, it would actually multiply with eight, not with the two. Hopefully you know something about that. That'd be nice. Um, if you want it to look like this, where you want everything on the bottom here, the way you'd have to type it in the calculator, as I said before, is associate that two with the quantity two plus two so that they are multiplied first uh, together in first. So I could write eight divided by parentheses two times quantity two plus two like that. That will give me what I'm looking for, which gives me my one answer as opposed to my 16 answer. So if I go to the calculator again, um, graphing calc, and let's go ahead and do eight divided by quantity two times the quantity two plus two, that's where you'll get an answer of one. Now, the reason I keep talking about the calculator besides verification of that's what the answer is or whatever, that's how it's written, blah, 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 is because it's also just a big warning of, to make sure that you use the calculator correctly. And this is probably more for any students that are gonna take pre-calc in the future or have to use the graphing calculator to graph certain things, what have you. I'm gonna give you a little anecdote, something when I was back in eighth grade in geometry, um, I had a problem on a quiz, I think, and it was something where I had to find the equation of a parallel or perpendicular line. Point is, it was like y equals mx plus b form. And um, the, the intended writing of it, let's say it was 2 thirds x plus 7, something like that. The intended appearance of it was this. But the way I wrote it was more like this. y equals 2 slash 3x plus 7. Now, my geometry teacher gave me a, uh, a marking, like half off or one off, and I tried to appeal it, and he said two words. It's ambiguous. It's ambiguous. Now, uh, if you don't know what ambiguous means, it's like vague, general, a lot of gray area, uncertain of which way you're going with it. And why is it vague? This goes back to the idea of what I said about things being joined at the hip. 3x, 3x, these two things together, is something that you would probably write very often, 3x, and not even think twice about the fact that this is multiplication. I mean, you probably know, but you don't think about it as you write it. When you say 3x, you don't say 3 times x, just like for 3, 4, and that's 34. To make a multiplication, you need this or the dot, you know. Um, but for 3x right here, it is multiplication, and sometimes people forget that. So people would commonly even write this 3x next to each other as if they're joined at the hip, as if they're both in the denominator together, and there's nothing thought about it. Granted, when I tried to write it, I was going with the intent that x was really a numerator, multiplication. Um, but he said, okay, if you're going to do that, first of all, you should write it this way. I always tell my students to write it this way now, after that in eighth grade. Not that I had students in eighth grade before that. But other things I should do, if I really want to be sure of it, if I don't do it this way with the slash, is I could either put parentheses around the two thirds to be absolutely certain to the person grading that I don't mean x is in the denominator, or I could write the x with the two like that. And these would be completely unambiguous to make you think that it's supposed to look like that there. Now, the graphing calculator, the graphing calculator would treat this writing here as this. For better or worse, without parentheses in any other set, the x is actually multiplying with that two because you do two divided by three first because order of operations. So this is where you have to be careful because what if you wanted to write a rational function like two over three x plus seven like that, how do you do that? You need, in this calculator, you need parentheses around the three X right there. It is a necessity to make it happen now. So without parentheses, again, it actually would do this, which is great, but that's why it's ambiguous. That's, that's for this graphing calculator here. If you go on a Google's calculator though, see, I don't know if it's more because it's a modern thing and they're just like, students are too negligent to note the fact that they need that case, that they might automatically parse this like that for you 
thinking that, oh, they're joined at the hip, that's what you meant to write. So if you want to do it different, you better do a big fraction like and maybe they can do that or you have to put parentheses around the two thirds to make it like that. So Google's going to be different. I'm talking about a TI-83 graphing calculator, something that you're going to use in class probably more often than anything else. Um, something for you to know. Also, it's not just variables, but it's also constants. Let's say we were using pi. Let's say you had to do, and this is the last example and I'm done. Let's say you want to do 30 divided by 2 pi. And trust me, there are reasons why you might want to do something like this. Maybe you're converting from radians to degrees or from meters to revolutions on a wheel, something like, you know, when you divide by 2, 2 pi occurs a lot because it has to do with uh, circle circumference. Um, anyway, when you do this division, think about the fact that pi is a little more than 3. So 2 times a little more than 3 is a little more than 6. And 30 divided by a little more than 6 is going to be a little less than 5 because 30 over 6 is 5. So we expect an answer a little less than 5. So if I wanted to use my calculator to round this off, what would I should I get? Let's go and check it out. Let's do 30 divided by 2 pi. And do we get an answer a little less than 5? No. We got an answer a little more than 45. And really what happened here, I want you to think about it, order of operations is happening. And you're like, there's just division. No, there's not just division. Right here is a multiplication. You didn't write times, you didn't write parentheses, but two and pi are joined at the hip because that is two multiples of pi. And those do not parse first. Those do not get grouped first and calculate first. 30 divided by two gives you 15, and that pi still being in the denominator, 15 divided by uh, pi, excuse me, times pi, pi is not in the denominator here, excuse me, I, it's depending on how I write it, 15 times pi is this thing right here. If you want pi to stay in the denominator, in other words, if you want to go back to somewhere like here, do a nice old rewrite of this thing, reduce 30 over 2 to 15, and keep pi in the denominator, then you can go ahead and do that and then calculate 15 over pi, and you'll get the answer that you're looking for of a little less than 5. 4 point, who knows what? 4.77. So that's the answer you actually want. Now the real question is, how can I type that 30 over 2 pi and make it get this answer. Same ways you got to do it from the um, y equals equations. You got to type 30 divided by parentheses 2 pi, and that allows you to group the 2 times pi together in the denominator and get 30 divided by that. And there you have your answer. So it's something that, you know, as it's just that last ending thing, I really want to warn you when it comes to using a graphing calculator how you got to be able to handle things with the denominator or how you can avoid such things as well. Um, I, I said that was the only example. There's another one I, I could do with exponents that would kind of do the same thing. Trying to multiply something in the exponent. If something's being raised to an exponent, trying to multiply, you need parentheses around that set as well. You know, just the you know just the small bits. Something to be very very careful of. All right, so that's all I got for you here. Again, just to go really back again, the answer is 16. The answer is not one. The answer is 16 is not one for the reasons of proper order of operations, proper perception. And um, furthermore, uh, graphing calculator verification there. Hope that was really helpful for you. Uh, more videos to come in the future, but I thought that I would adhere to this uh, viral one first and address it to the world. All right. Thank you. Take care.